Let's talk about Jira project structure. How do you set up those Jira projects for maximum efficiency? This video is part of our effort to deliver the best quality learning content in regards to Jira, Confluence, um, project management apps, and all the other apps in the Atlassian ecosystem, really. If you want to support that, then consider subscribing to the channel. And of course, you can also reach out to us for paid services that we do offer in all of those areas. All right, let's go back to our Jira projects. This video, um, it, it, I was inspired to shoot it after several, really many conversations with different customers. And very, very often, the customers are very concerned about structuring their project data. How to structure the data inside the Jira so that everything clicks, you know? And very often we are asked to give our best guidance at the very beginning of the whole process. And honestly, it's a little bit impossible to do, right? I mean, we, we can share some of the ways that it can be done, but without digging deep into how you're actually going to be working with the data, it's really not possible to make any accurate recommendation. But because so many people are interested in at least understanding what are the different options out there, today I've, prefer I've prepared something special for you. <clears throat> and instead of looking at the Jira screen, which we normally do, we will be talking about Jira projects and how to structure them, but actually we will be talking about them, looking at the presentation that I've prepared. And it took me like half an hour and I hated doing this because I hate doing presentations. So hopefully you appreciate it. All right, so this is the one. <laughs> it has only one slide. Don't ask me why it took uh, half an hour. That's probably why I hate doing them, you know? So when I was thinking about it, how to structure it so that I can present it to, to you in a video. I thought that it has to be divided into three main streams that usually we encounter when we're working with our customers. The first stream is super simple. It's called business initiatives per Jira project or Jira project per business initiative, maybe. That's a better way of putting it. So what it means is I, I'm, I'm like purposefully using the, the words business initiative, not a project so that it's not confusing, but what I really mean is a project. So you're starting a project in your company, you know, it has to have a set of actions that need to happen to deliver some kind of value at the end. So uh, let's call it business initiative because different companies call it different ways. It, it might be an initiative, it might be um, a project, it might be um, a, a theme sometimes call it, it might be an epic, people call it an epic sometimes. So there are many different ways for it. Let's call it business initiative. So there is nothing wrong with structuring your Jira in a way that whenever you launch a business initiative, you also start a new Jira project, okay? It's clean, it's simple, it's easy to manage. And it gives quite a lot of uh, benefits in terms of management because each Jira project has its own settings that you can leverage the power of, of those settings to make you know, the access rights, for example, to the, to, to the project data, uh, the way you want it to be, uh, to define your own components, your own releases, stuff like that. Um, of course, uh, workflows, I, I'm not going to go into the depths of configuring your project here. I, I just want to mention that this is definitely a fine way of structuring your Jira. Uh, the downside, I think the, the, the biggest one is that if you have lots of business initiatives, your Jira will be swamped with Jira projects. Uh, but if you have a good administrator and you take care of the data, you archive the projects that have ended, you have a smart naming convention, you will be fine. You know, we've seen instances with really hundreds of Jira projects and it's doable, it's not a problem. As long as people are trained to register them properly or admins register the, 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 the projects for them, um, and uh, there are smart naming conventions. People know how to use it, how to search for it. So there you go. Now, by the way, I have um, also some insides, so to say, of those Jira projects. And in this case, most of the time you will be fine with just the hierarchy of issues. So it says over here, Jira tasks, Jira subtasks. But I, I kind of didn't want to go deep into this. But what I mean here is epics. Uh, user stories, tasks, subtasks, bugs, whatever is needed, right? If you need to build a 
six, ten uh, um, levels of hierarchy, do it, right? I just have two over here uh, just for the sake of an example. So don't think of it as a guidance. Think of it as a gen general idea of uh, what's inside. All right, so the, the second column, it says work divided by products. So if you're creating products, it is also a good way to create your Jira projects per product. So you have several products maybe, and then you create several Jira projects. Each Jira project is for each product. And then what those Jira projects allow you to do, they allow you to create components inside. They allow you to have releases, so new versions of your product, right? And then uh, inside those releases, of course, you will again have those epics, user stories, tasks, subtasks, whatever, right? So this is what this hierarchy represents over here. So you would have one Jira project, then one product. If you have multiple products, you would have multiple Jira projects, okay? Simple as that. The third one is work divided by streams of work. What do I mean by a stream of work here? Very important thing to emphasize and explain. Uh, so very, very often, some companies in, in total, some companies just in part, are working or, or have departments working as a um, um, business as usual, operational activities, you know, um, something that is an ongoing work, right? And then it's, it's hard to divide it into separate pieces. Um, it's hard to label it somehow so that it makes sense to uh, create big chunks of work uh, that are bounded in time even, right, like as projects. Uh, so that's why in these kind of situations, it's totally okay to create one Jira project per one stream of work, uh, one operational activity, right? And uh, again, inside of those Jira projects, you might use components. I put it in parentheses because I think it's an option. I think you will most likely use custom fields on your Jira issues, right? So again, you will have those epics, tasks, subtasks, whatever, and you will probably want some way of labeling those Jira issues. Uh, so that you know that, for example, this one came from the IT. This request came from marketing and so on, right? This one uh, is about that project and this one is about the other project, right? So there can be really different situations where you have those ongoing streams of work and you probably want to categorize the work that is coming into this stream of work so that later on you can create a meaningful reports out of it, of course. We all want to have meaningful reports in the end, don't we? So um, again, going with one Jira project per stream of work is also a very good idea. Now, can you have all three of those in one company? Yes, absolutely, right? So if you're a big company, you might have different departments. One, one, several departments might be responsible for delivering business initiatives, kind of, right? So then maybe for, for those, you will be creating Jira projects per business initiative. Now, you might also be creating products as a company, and then you might be using this solution. And you, mo if you're using those two, then most likely you also have this part uh, somewhere in your company, right? For example, you might have an IT department that is serving everyone else, right? And they are not dividing their works per projects because it wouldn't make much sense to them, but it's like an ongoing inflow of requests coming to them. And then they want to maybe have just one uh, Jira project where they can categorize that work, pro prioritize it, and just get it through uh, the uh, bottleneck, <laughs> which sometimes happens, right? So, so this is what it is. Now, are these, an important question, are these the only three that you will uh, meet out there? Of course not, of course not. So just like in nature, if there is a combination, if there is a variant of this that you can think of, it's almost certain that it, it, it's, it's almost certain that it exists out there. And it's almost certain that we've seen it because, oh my God, people like to really mess up their Jira instances. It's like if there were medals for um, messing up your structure of data in Jira, in Confluence, there would be a huge competition, you know? You know what I mean? So uh, don't be surprised. Don't, be, don't, don't feel bad if you are structured in a way that is not optimal. It's absolutely normal because many companies started to use 
these programs, uh, we're we are talking about Jira, but you know, Jira is just one of uh, the similar programs, but there are many other on the market. So many companies start, start to use these programs without any guidance. They discover these programs. They learn uh, these programs by using them, by going through the functionalities, by, uh, and, and then years pass before they realize what they should have done at the beginning. You know, and they, they just have to restructure and uh, get back on the right track. And that's it. So, so don't feel bad. It's like totally normal. And uh, if, if you're one of, uh, of the people that feel like your Jira Confluence instance requires some maintenance, requires some work, then absolutely find a good time to do it and sit down and figure out what is the best way to approach this. If you would like some professional help, you can always reach out to us and we will be happy to share our experience in these areas, uh, which is always uh, quite a lot of fun, you know? Yeah, I could probably mention several different cases, but I don't want to shame anyone uh, because, as I said, I don't think it's, it's shame. Uh, I think that it's just the way it is. And constant um, drive to perfection is something that uh, will be there all the time. Um, anyway, this is it. This is what I wanted to say in this video. Um, it, it has been mostly inspired by customers that we're working with uh, in regards to implementing the project management tools, because this is when they are wondering, okay, how do we structure the data so that uh, the project data inflow is correct, so that we get those reports, so that we can manage resources, so that we, we get this beautiful gun charts, you know? It's not that important. This is also I want to emphasize because these tools, uh, at least the, the biggest one in the Atlas and ecosystem, they are designed to work in almost any kind of setup you already have, right? So don't worry about this too much. We, we can restructure this, sure, and we do it for some of the customers, but most of our customers are actually okay with the setup they currently have. And there's nothing forcing you to change it which is, I think, the good news because, of course, then it's less, less um, money involved, less change involved, so it's less drastic for the people, for the users, day-to-day -day users of the tool, uh, and, it's, and it's totally okay. But it's also fine to think about how to optimize it so that maybe in the future you will be able to do it better or maybe you want to restructurize what you currently have because um, due to the structure that you currently have, you're missing on some important reporting because in some cases it just it just cannot be done because you're you're just missing the data or the data is not structured properly. It happens, but as as I said, not very often. All right, so now you've learned now you've learned how um, the Jira projects can be structured. What are the three main different options? Uh, you also know now that these are not the only ones, and there are several other ways of doing this. And as long as it works, I'm always a fan of you know not following strict guidelines but creating a solution that works for you, for your particular circumstances. And if it's uh, a one that looks like this, then it's okay, you know, then it's okay. Because we all have different needs and we all have different um, position on the market. We work with different subcontractors, different partners, and they also use different tools. And sometimes it's just better to adapt rather than force uh, some standards that will bite us in the butt in the end. You know what I mean? Yes. All right. So um, this is it. If you think that this video has been helpful, consider giving it a like. Um, drop a comment as well. It will help other people find this content more easily. And of course, if you want to talk about uh, with us about uh, how to structure your Jira data properly, how to implement uh, the project management tool inside the Jira uh, or Atlas and ecosystem, which I think is a huge benefit if you're already using Jira, um, then the contacts are in the description and just drop us a note. We will set up a meeting and talk about what you need and how we can help you achieve this. Thank you so much for listening. I'll, I'll be seeing you in one of the next videos.